Here's a recipe expressed in United States customary units of measurement. I think it's very possible for that to be a good recipe and yet become a bad recipe when it's expressed in metric units. And vice versa, a total banger recipe written in grams and mills can become rubbish when it's written in pounds and cups. And by banger I mean good, not sausage. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's a recipe by Chef Peroxide Mick Craggy Face for a shepherd's pie. Love a shepherd's pie. What's he call for here? 500 grams of minced lamb. The Brits call it minced even though it's actually been ground. Luckily I know that. What I don't know is how much 500 grams is in ounces and pounds. You know, the system of weights that we here in the United States inherited from the Brits, like some kind of hand-me-down sweater with a hole in it before they went off and got a fancy new continental sweater. Let's figure this out. Google is a free website. 500 grams is 1.1 pounds. If I go to the meat counter at my grocery store and ask the guy there for 1.1 pounds, pounds of ground lamb, I suspect I might get one pound of ground lamb and one-tenth of a pound of loogie. <sighs> ground meat is generally sold in round numbers, so what am I going to do? I'm going to buy one pound of ground lamb, and my pie is going to be one-eleventh less meaty than Gordon's. Maybe that's not a big deal, but let's keep reading. What else we need? 300 milliliters of chicken stock. That's a great quantity for Gordon because that's how big the stock container is at the Tesco near Gordon's house in London. He just pours the whole lot in and then tosses the container in the trash. I'm sorry, I mean the bin. Chicken stock in my grocery store is pretty much only sold in two pound cartons. That's 946 mils. So what am I going to do? Especially if I'm the kind of relatively inexperienced cook who would be following a Gordon Ramsay recipe to the letter anyway, I'm going to buy the bigger container, pour in exactly how much Gordon tells me to pour in, and then I'm going to stick the rest of this into the refrigerator so that I can throw it away in three to five weeks. When we write recipes, we tend to build them around those ingredients that come in relatively fixed quantities. Some ingredients come in relatively fluid quantities, like say water. I'd say that counts as a fluid. I can write a recipe that calls for this much water or this much water. It's all the same to you, because you can pour off however much you need. But if I'm going to write, say, a dried pasta recipe, there's a relatively fixed quantity involved, i.e. the box. Sure, I could call for this much pasta or this much pasta, but nobody wants a box of pasta hanging around the pantry with not enough noodles in it to do anything with, but at the same time too many to just throw away without feeling guilty about it. A recipe that leaves you with this at the end of the night is a bad recipe. I don't care how good it tastes. It is inconsiderate of the realities of being a home cook. So I'm not going to write a recipe like that. I'm going to treat the box as a relatively fixed quantity and then let all of the other more fluid quantities flow proportionally from there. Like, here's my macaroni and cheese recipe. Oh, sorry, Brits. Macaroni cheese. It starts with one pound of dried pasta shells. Yes, I know that technically makes it shells and cheese, but I can't fight that battle right now. Plus, Brits, what do you want me to call it? Shells cheese? Anyway, dried pasta comes in one pound boxes in the United States, so all the other quantities in my recipe flow from that starting point. Now, if I want to translate that recipe into metric, as so many of my viewers have earnestly requested that I do, I'm going to have a problem, because one pound is 453 grams. The Tesco near Gordon's house doesn't sell a 453 gram box, it sells a 500 gram box. And that's not a trivial difference. That's like 10% more pasta. So do I give the metric quantity as 500 grams or 453 grams? If I round it up to 500, do I just hope that all of the other quantities in the recipe will also kind of turn out to be a little bit bigger when converted to metric? Let's see if that works. I call for three Three cups of milk. Three cups is 709 mils. I'm tempted to round that down to 700, but now I've got slightly more pasta and slightly less milk, and gah, see, this is not going to work. My point here is that a system of weights and measures is like a language. It arguably is a language. And sure, you can translate something from one language to another, but a poem written in English is never going to be as good once it's translated into, say, French. I mean, I can easily translate the ideas, but the meter, the rhyme, assonance, alliteration, all that stuff stuff is going to be lost. And Lord help me if I've used an idiomatic expression in my poem. I mean, imagine I wrote a poem about the rain in which there's a cat and there's a dog, because I'm doing a play on the English idiom, it's raining cats and dogs. That joke is not going to land in France, because in France, when it's raining a lot, they don't say that it's raining cats and dogs. They literally say that it's raining ropes. That's actually like a classic example of this problem I'm talking about. I didn't make that up. I'm not that cool. But anyway, yes, of course, you can do excellent translations of poetry, but 
there's a reason that excellent translations of poetry are normally written by other poets, because in order to make a poem work in another language, you basically have to reauthor it in that language. You can't just run it through Google Translate. So if I were to translate one of my recipes into metric, ideally I wouldn't want to just do a Google job on it and translate one pound into 453 grams. I would want to reimagine the entire recipe to make it natively metric, to make it work with the things that you have in your grocery store and the things that are easy to measure on your scales and in your measuring vessels. This discussion raises a pretty interesting question. Owing purely to the differences in measurement systems, could it be the case that food is appreciably different in the metric world compared to here in the non-metric world? And by non-metric world, of course, I mean the wide world of the US, Liberia, and Myanmar. Yes, we three are the only non-metric countries left. Might there be ways in which food is noticeably different here in the United States compared to everywhere else in the world, purely because the measurement systems that we use nudge us towards making certain decisions in the kitchen? It's the whole tail wagging the dog phenomenon, right? In linguistics and cognitive science, they have this concept called the Sapir-Whorf phenomenon. It's also known as linguistic relativity, the idea that our languages actually shape our thinking. The classic example of that is the Russian word for blue. There is no Russian word for blue. There's a Russian word for light blue and a Russian word for dark blue, but there's no Russian word the existence of which implicitly asserts that both colors are shades of the same color. As a result, Russian speakers and English speakers think about these colors in very different ways. That is at least the theory. Linguistic relativity has a lot of critics. Not all the scientists believe that, but that's the idea. Let's look over in the fields of business and economics, where they have this concept called round number bias. People are more likely to buy or sell an asset once it hits a nice round number, even if that might not be the most rational time to buy or sell. You gotta wonder if there's some phenomenon in cooking that's kinda like linguistic relativity and round number bias. Let's go back to Gordon's shepherd's pie. He tells you to bake it at 180 Celsius. That's a relatively round number, very common in metric recipes. If I were to translate that to Fahrenheit from my oven, that is three. 356 Fahrenheit. My oven can't do that. My oven can do 350, probably the most common temperature in Fahrenheit cookbooks. It's so common that 350 is literally the default temperature on this oven, and it is six degrees cooler than the corresponding temperature in the metric world. Is American food different from, say, European food because we're baking a lot of our stuff at a slightly lower temperature? I did a lot of research to see if someone has proposed this phenomenon before. I couldn't find anything. If something is out there, please let me know about it. If no one has proposed this before, then there's a free thesis or dissertation idea for somebody studying food science. Take it. Just promise me that you'll call it the Ragusea phenomenon. For my part, I'm going to make you this promise now that I'm going to start doing metric conversions on all my recipes. I'm not going to reimagine them in metric, I'm just going to do a Google job on them. And I have no idea how I'm going to handle things like tablespoons. Did you know that a tablespoon in Canada and the UK is 15 mils, but in the US it's 14.79, and in Australia it's 20? But it shouldn't matter that much, because the better way to use someone else's recipe is always as a starting point. Take the concept, the idea of the dish, and then make it work with whatever they have down at your grocery store that day that's looking nice or is on sale. And in the same way, you make it work with whatever quantities and temperatures your system of measurement is subconsciously prodding you to use. Because our minds are not our own. The system is in control. Wake up, sheeple! Ooh, that reminds me. I want shepherd's pie.